That's a great song, isn't it? And easily enables us to respond to the invitation from Psalm 33 to sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It's fitting and up for the upright to praise him. Well, we've done that in the words of that song. But did you notice that it was a song built around questions? It was kind of who's and what uh, in the in the way the, the song was structured. Um, and we sing those questions out, not because we don't know the answer, but actually because it gives us an opportunity to ring out that the answer to all those questions is only a holy God. And that builds us up in our faith and our wonder. Now, what is the most frequently asked question in your household? Or what do you commonly find forming on your lips? Ed gave us insight last week into one of those, uh, perhaps in a car. You can imagine the question is, are we nearly there yet? And it led him to send a particular Father's Day card to his dad one year. But that might not be the most frequently asked question in your household. So pause for a moment, press the pause button and talk amongst yourselves or just have a moment to ponder. What is the most frequently asked question in your household or what question is commonly found on your lips? And when you've identified that, and perhaps somebody else is going to tell you what you're always asking, uh, ask the question, why do we ask questions? So what's the most commonly asked question is one, and then why do we ask questions? So what did you identify as your most frequently asked question? Or did somebody else in your household tell you what you're always asking? Um, don't know. I, I could guess perhaps some of them. So some of them might be, what's for tea? Is there anything to eat? Uh, when are you going to get off the Xbox or whatever uh, gadgets you have in your house? Uh, it might be, would you like a coffee? I like that question. Um, there are a range of questions that we ask in day to day interaction. But why do we ask questions? Did you come up with any answers to that? I suspect most of the time we're asking a question because we don't know the answer or perhaps because we want something. But there is another reason for asking a question. And I think we find that in the passage of scripture that we're looking at today. Sometimes we ask questions so that we remind ourselves of a great truth. So something is reinforced by the starkness of the question. I think you'll get what I mean by uh, looking at the passage with me. So I thought, do it. I'm going to read uh, today's passage, which is from Romans 8. And uh, for those perhaps who are not used to navigating scripture, uh, the Bible's made up of a variety of books. It's like a big library uh, under one set of covers. Uh, and then each book is divided into sections called chapters and then divided into verses. And we're going to read from Romans, which is a book uh, in the New Testament, which records Jesus's life and the growth of the early church. And uh, it's going to be in chapter eight. Uh, but the reading, it will come up uh, on the screen so you don't have to worry about looking it up. Um, but I'm going to read today's passage. And what I want to do is spot the number of questions. OK, so you might need to write it down. Uh, but as I read through, see how many questions you can spot. So let me get my Bible and we're going to read from Romans chapter eight beginning at verse 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So how many did you spot? Should we work through them and see how many you got? See whether it's the same number I counted? Right, number one. Uh, should we have it above? So number one, in verse 31, it's a huge question that introduces the passage. Number two question. Number three. Number four. Number five, and then number six. Wow, it was a section that was full of questions, wasn't it? And it wasn't because Paul didn't know the answer. He was asking those questions. So with each answer, he would build the confidence of those early followers of Jesus, that regardless of what circumstances they were in, God would come into sharper focus. And one of the questions was about whether anything could condemn us. And that reminded me of the start we had to our service a couple of weeks ago when I set you a code to crack. And uh, Juliet and Noah Boyd cracked that code and they sent me a little video of them reading the answer out. And I thought that would set the tone as we go into uh, our next couple of songs. We're going to respond just with amazement and awe to what God has done for us. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 